this tutorial is something that can really be helpful for your productivity and your workflow. We're going to be sending an email to a specified address whenever a condition is met on the sheet, and that email is going to contain data from the sheet. Here's the test sheet that I set up, assuming dates of orders, where that order was made, what location it was from, the order number, and the number of items. And I've already set up some conditional formatting just to change the row green if the status is approved, but we want a little bit more than that. We want to receive an email every time that an order is updated to approve. It's actually pretty simple. Here's the code we're looking at. Like most of our edit triggers, we start by making sure the edit occurred at the correct row, sorry, the correct column, and that the value is correct. So anytime an edit is made on column five, which is E, and making sure that the word is approved, the edit is approved, then it's going to run the rest of the program. As we mentioned previously, it's always best to do a single read from the sheet rather than reading every time you pull something from the sheet. So we call the entire row at once. So get the entire range starting at the row, one row, well, so it starts at, this is the starting row. So start where the edit was made. Start at column one. And it's one row high and four columns wide. So we're going to be getting columns A, B, C, and D of whatever row is edited. Then we're going to assign each array value to a variable just to make it a little clearer what we're doing. So the order number is the third item in the array. Arrays are zero indexed. So the first item is zero, the second item is one, the third item is two. So row one, column three, we're going to assign that to a variable n. So for the order number, we're going to create a new date from this value in column A. Now we're going to use this trick to locale date string. Otherwise, the date would be something much longer and much less legible, but this is simply going to turn it into um, 11 slash 13 slash 2020 instead of, I think it would otherwise show up as Friday, November 13, 2020 at 0.0.0.0 a.m. That's not what we want. That's a lot more information than we need in that. We just want the date. So we're going to use two locale date string to get that. We're going to get the number of items from column four. We're going to get the location from column two. And then we're also going to make a variable to hold today's date, the date that the edit was made. Here I'm using two locale string rather than two locale date string. Two locale date string will simply return the date, 11 13 20. Two locale string will give us the date and time. So in this case, it's going to be 11-13-2020 and around 2.10 p.m. It just gives us a little bit more information in that one. Because what I want this message to say is order number, which order it was, on what date that order was placed, containing a certain number of items from which location, approved at and the day and time of the approval. Let's go ahead and just show what that should look like before sending the actual email. So I'm going to add a logger just to output the message. Now, obviously this is not a simple trigger. This is not on edit, that's important. The Gmail app is one that requires authentication. So in order to use the Gmail app, we do have to create an actual trigger. I'm gonna walk you through that. Go to edit current projects triggers, add trigger, send mail edit, so the same function that's correct, and we're going to make that an on edit trigger. Excellent, now that should run every time that we make an edit. Let's just go ahead and mark this first one approved. One minute. So here's the trigger I just ran. 
And that's what it shows. Order of number AN336319 from the date that it was made containing 57 items from location one approved at 11-13-2020 to 10.59 p.m. So that's exactly the output I'm looking for. So let's go ahead and uncomment out the actual email. The email itself is using the Gmail app and we're using the send mail function. Send mail has two, two sections. One of them allows you to specify additional options. For most cases, you don't need those options. So we're just using this first one where it requires the recipient, the subject, and the body. That's it. So I've already specified myself as the recipient. The subject is approved order. And then here I'm inputting this entire variable as the body. Let's go ahead and approve this one. Project executions. Excellent. Shows that that one ran. And I had already made a folder and a filter to hold these emails when they come in. And there it is. It sent the email directly to me with all of the items. So that's how you send an email using a spreadsheet. That's using an edit trigger so that when the condition is met, it sends the email. And it's also using the sheet data itself in that email.